What's up, risk takers? Welcome to the Kill Pete Strategy. I am Pete. I am a progressive specialist playing risk global domination on PC. Um, this video is going to be different than my others. I know you guys are used to my unscripted, unedited content. And uh, today I feel like this conversation is important enough to discuss that I've written some points down to keep myself on track. Today's Friday, so I'm playing a fixed game. And I should be playing this for all of you to enjoy and discuss the strategy behind it. But today, this conversation with you is going to be more philosophy and less strategy. And I hope you're ready. So, philosophically, I'm a structuralist. I tend to look at systems and look at the incentives they promote and then look at the outcomes that result from those incentives. Outcomes tend to be correlated with incentives. Um, and you can really look at everything from that perspective. So, the, the question I'm begging here is, what do the incentives um, currently going on in the game of risk promote? Um, so let's talk a little bit about Immanuel Kant and the categorical imperative. Uh, Kant was a 17th century German philosopher, uh, widely considered to be one of the most intelligent and most important philosophers of all time. And uh, he had some impact in um, combining theories of rationalism and empiricism, but also um, Kant's work with ethics. So uh, Kant's major ethical contribution is called the categorical imperative. It is his formulation of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The way uh, Kant's translated German goes, um, the, the way the categorical imperative is defined is act according to that maxim that you would will it to be a universal law. Basically saying, if we all act in a way that we would want to always act and have everyone always act, then that action could be said to be morally righteous. I mostly agree with Kant. I'm mostly a good Kantian. I mostly behave as if the categor categorical imperative is real and means something to me. So, what does this have to do with risk? Well. Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. And for better or worse, I have been given this platform. Um, so I'm not going to squander it. And I'm not going to just sit back and watch uh, a game that I love fall victim to the squeaky wheels. Um, so what do I mean by that? I'm here trying to elucidate a complicated problem. The most recent update nerfed, broke the speed for PC users in an attempt to equalize that between PC and mobile. I'd just like to state very clearly that I believe that there should be no difference in speed between PC and mobile. I also would like to say that it's not really about me winning because I'm fast at mobile. And if mobile is faster, as it is now, then I can play competitively in mobile. What I'm concerned about is I'm concerned about a trend in the wrong direction, and I'm concerned about the reduction of enjoyment in a game that I love, and I've spent so much time working on and working with all of you. So the latest update, uh, the devs in their effort to repair the stack vanishing glitch slow down the attacking speed of PC users. And I get comments over and over again on my videos. Wow, Pete, it's so satisfying to watch you capture the whole board so quickly. Um, there's a couple of skills going on in the game of Risk, right? You put, this, you put the timer to 60 seconds. You want to be able to execute your plan as quickly as possible. You also want to have a plan. You also want to be able to change if circumstances change. Now, all of those are different skills. So, 
Me being unable to capture the board as quickly as I previously could is a change that reduces the fun for me um, because of the visceral experience of going through those motions. And, and as I said, right, I can still win and I will still win. That's not really what I'm questioning at the moment. What I'm more concerned to dig into is why did these changes occur? Who are we helping? Who do we think we're helping? I'm going to try and make a deal with Magenta and see if they let me hold the old Furman chunks. Let me see if they let me hold North America. Slowly. No rush. So who do we think we're helping? So the ethos of this video is don't grease the squeaky wheels. Um, so yeah, I really do think that PC and mobile should be able to play at the same speed. I, I believe in fairness and competition. Um, but it makes more sense, to my mind, to speed up the interface for mobile rather than nerf or break the interface for PC. Right? If, if I can't compete on a level playing field, how could my wins said to be justified? Or yours, right? And there's a very loud contingent of people on the internet complaining about unfairness. And I can't blame the devs for listening to a very loud contingent of people. Turns out the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Okay, let's dig into that some more. So, my experience from running my own company, and a lesson that I really learned the hard way, was not to grease the squeaky wheels, because if you do, you end up with a list of nothing but squeaky wheels. I can tell you the story in greater detail. So, I started a company mowing lawns when I was 18 or so. I built this business up to, at its greatest extent, we had five crews running. Um, so five pickup trucks, plus myself, two guys each. So I was employing eight people. Um, mowing something like 450 lawns a week because that's the the key right um, you you want to return you want the return business you want to come back every week have the reliable work so what ended up happening for me over those years was i became the largest concern in my part of town and i thought that that was a success because what i was measuring was um, customer retention customer satisfaction what I wasn't really measuring was my own satisfaction or my bottom line. So I changed in recent years to focusing much more on, um, is it profitable? Is it worth my time? Who is worth my time? And the conclusion that I've drawn is the squeaky wheels are not. They're not worth your time. Um, so I put myself in the center of a machine. I have all these employees. I have all these customers. I put myself in the center of a machine that I built for myself and I was miserable. I was unhealthy. I was the point person for a lot of anger. And when you're right when when you're dealing with that many people, somebody's always upset. So this is where I I cut back to talking about the devs. I think Lucy is in an unenviable position. Her job is so hard, and I'm so grateful for what she does. Imagine having to deal with incessant negativity and have it be your responsibility to address. I know because I was there. And the conclusion I drew eventually was enough of this. This is making me miserable. This is making me sick. And it's not making me money. Why am I doing it? It's really tough to be in the center of all that negativity. Sometimes the hope when you're in it is that silence is golden. Um, and that's sort of one of the mantras that I stuck by. I used to believe that good enough was good enough. But it's not. We need greatness to aspire to. It's what makes the highest heights of this game so compelling to so many. The aspirational nature of speed and skill, right? Maybe you're not there yet, but maybe one day you will be.
the first time I played this game, and I played on mobile for a while, first time I played this game, I looked at the leaderboard and I thought, wow, there's no way I'll ever make it on there. I'm, there's no way I'll ever be good enough. But having that aspirational goal, having that large target in the distance, something to shoot for, and then something to work so hard at, and then to be where I'm at now, to be considered a worthy, valued member of this community is something that is so gratifying for me, I can't really, really explain to you other than to just say how grateful I am. Um, Game pause. You, I think we all need something to aspire to. I think central to life satisfaction as a human is experiencing incremental progress towards your goals, having small, intermediate, and large goals, and seeing some sort of progression, progressive trajectory in accomplishing those things. Um, that's what I have found to be of a benefit to me, and that's why I'm sticking with this project that I've so passionately, so zealously tried to connect with all of you, talk about theory, have fun with this game. Um, all of these things are so important to me. But instead we're pandering? to the lowest of the low, right? Instead, we're greasing the squeaky wheels because they're the ones who bitch incessantly and complain loudly, right? We're not going to reward our enfranchised players, some of the best of the best on the discourse, uh, on the Discord, right? Um, who've worked so hard to get this fast, not only spamming enter and clicking mouse, but also in their head to figure out the plan, to figure out the strategy and then execute in the shortest amount of time possible. We're not going to reward that. We're going to reward someone who complains loudly, but doesn't listen for advice. The worst, the worst. I'm going to read a bit from Reddit. So there's a user who has like a cancer groan. I will not name this person because I don't want to draw more attention and give them a greater notoriety than they already have or a greater voice than they appear to have. I'd just like to read some of their public quotes from a thread entitled Giving PC Players a Huge Speed Advantage. I don't care if people agree with me. I'm right. If they don't agree, that's their problem. You really need to learn how to read. I guarantee I'm as good as you. And it goes on and on and on like this, repeatedly and loudly. And I guess if you squeak and squeak, and squeak. Eventually someone listens to you. Originally I once responded to this person to offer them strategic help for their game and they hit me right back with an ad hominem attack. So my conclusion when I'm in those sorts of situations is, well, obviously this person isn't worth my time and I'm going to stop talking to them. And that's sort of how I feel about much of the Reddit and Facebook community at the moment. And I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to boost up how great I feel the Discord is in compared to other spaces on the internet that seem to have weaponized mild anger for ad revenue or whatever, or eyeballs. Seems to have incentivized a mild anger. People like this are a cancer in our community, and I'm not a big censorship guy, but it boggles my mind that this person is still being allowed to spout this vitriol. Maybe instead of greasing the squeaky wheels, we should allow them to grind to a halt. If you're never going to learn, 
go away. You're making the space toxic. You're making it less fun for me. And now the devs are listening. Not just spouting the verse roll, the, the vitriol, but being listened to by the devs. My enjoyment of the game is being reduced to placate a person like this, and it boggles my mind how obviously incorrect that is. I want to thank the devs for making such a great game that I obviously love, that we obviously love, that I care so much about to make a video every single day, that I care about this community so much to talk to you all, learn about you, learn about the game, play together. I'm having so much fun here. And I'm going to win, one way or another, because I'm good. <laughs> because I care to be good, because I care to learn how. But what I really believe in my heart is that we need to do better as a community. We need to boost each other up. We need to be a positive influence. We need to be that change we want to see in the world. So I'm sorry if you're taking what I'm saying here negatively, but it's only because I love this game. It's only because I love this community. It's only because I found this place where I finally feel like I belong in the world. I feel like my ideas are valued. It's only because of that that I care so much to make this video. Let's bring up the attack speed of mobile. Let's actually solve the stack vanishing glitch. Let's make ourselves the limiting factor of whether or not we win. I want to thank Lucy specifically for doing such a consistent job keeping this game honest, getting rid of the cheaters, listening to the community. We're not always going to agree. And that's good. That's a good thing. We, sh we shouldn't always agree. People are different. They have different desires. They, they have different abilities, strengths and weaknesses. That's what makes the world beautiful. I don't want everyone to agree with me. That world would be so boring. I love being challenged. I love being wrong. I love learning from all of you. Improving. I don't think this is correct. And that's okay. Because maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'm not. Before I end this rant, I'm going to leave you with a plot summary. The story is Harrison Bergeron by Kurt Vonnegut. And this is directly from Wikipedia, so... I thought my mouse was broken. <laughs> I thought my mouse and my keyboard were not transmitting properly. Let's see, what do I got? 14 on 14? That's too close. Um, Harrison Bergeron is a dystopian science fiction short story written by American writer Kurt Vonnegut, first published in October 1961. In the year 2081, the 211th, 212th, and 213th Amendment to the Constitution dictate that all Americans are fully equal and not allowed to be smarter, better looking, or more physically able than anyone else. The Handicapper General's agents enforce equality laws, forcing citizens to wear handicaps, masks for those who are too beautiful, loud radios that disrupt thoughts inside the ears of intelligent people, and heavyweights 
for the strong and the athletic. Is that the solution? Is that the world you want to see? Where we are all made equal by handicaps? I want to raise everyone up. I want to be the positive influence in this community. I'm sure this video will be controversial. I welcome the criticism. Please talk to me. I respect you all. I'm so grateful that I'm here. I'm so grateful that you're here. And I'm so grateful for the disagreements. Let's see if we can solve this complicated problem together. And now I'm going to play a game of Risk. So until next time, for all of you on the path to aspirational greatness, I wish you good games and good luck. Alright, so it looks like there are only two human opponents left. Yellow and black. And both yellow and black are doing alright in terms of holding continents. I'm going to see if I can make an alliance with either of them. Try eat yellow or try eat magenta on my next turn. Neither of them seem to be biting. Yellow doesn't want to make a deal. Whoops. Should have made a deal. Now I'll offer them alliance again. Who am I dealing with? Who is Meyer Hedges 31? 500 hours played with 40 wins and 1,000 games. Okay. What about Mozums? How are you, Mozums? Are you any good? Should be able to eat magenta on my next turn. Get two cards. <laughs> About half an hour before the uh, All Grandmasters second round tournament game. So let's hope I can finish this up. But you never know if your tax speed is reduced. I'll take the two cards now, I think. Three players remaining, one big bot holding Europe. Yellow player is the next to go unless they can figure out how to not get their all their continents broken. Gotta do something now, Meyer Hedges, or your days are numbered, sir. don't think this guy knows how to play Risk. Unless I get suicided into by black, I think I'm in okay shape.
See if they have a match on four. I understand how important new player acquisition is to the health and longevity of a game, but I also think that supporting your enfranchised players is equally, if not more, important. I was worried about auto match and how that would affect my enjoyment of the game, but this is... this is structural. Yep, so now I eat yellow and take their five cards. And it'll be a 1v1 with a bot. Me versus black. And black's doing okay, but I don't think that they're going to be able to deal with me in a 1v1 type circumstance, particularly with 28 troops locked in Siam. Let's see though, it's going to cost me a bit. remain. I am about 10 troops behind the black player. And we have equivalent stacks locked inside of ourselves at the moment. And the game just became a 1v1. I'm sure this will be fixed. I'm sure I will get my speed back. I have no doubt in my mind. Um, I think this was an attempt to solve a very significant problem that the stack glitch was, and it failed. And the way we make the game more fair, I believe we got it. I believe the devs are going to figure this out, solve our problems. Use the lot. And then free up my big stack. Still about 10 troops behind black. Let's see if I got the big match. Now I do. Okay. okay so purple puts in the big match. Maybe they now move into some of Africa instead of Europe. Yeah, I can I can control this bot a bit better than old Mazams can. Putting in six troops at the beginning of his turn. What a great game. Like I'm not complaining, I'm really not. I, I'm I'm trying to be constructive with my criticism. I love this game. It it, it checks all the boxes for me. It gives me something to do. Something to keep my mind busy. Interacting with the community gives me a community, a sense of belonging. I've learned in my life that catch far more flies with honey than with vinegar. I believe in being positive. I believe in being the change. Who's with me? Oh, sweet. The bot finishes Africa and doesn't take Europe. Let's see if Black lets me hold Europe. Because that's going to end this game real quick.
Okay, they have the 10 point master now, 25 troops ahead of me. They're gonna break here for sure, but they cut through a 10 stack to do it. Any damage they do to the bot is good for me at this point. Do they try and take Asia and not break Europe? Ah, good sir. Good sir. Surely you didn't think I would let you hold Asia. still have a 10-ish. They have a 15 troop advantage on me. I think they still might win this game. But maybe they concern themselves with the bot too much. Breaks me in Europe. Breaks me in SA. No, finishes the path. Right. Right, right, right. Good work. But fails. Rolling two on twos will never win. I think I win the 1v1. I now have the advantage in terms of troops. He's still locked inside of himself, so. break Europe. Yes. Damn it. Oh. Got a match on three? No. So I have 21 territories. They have five troops they have access to. Maybe six stack there. They have nothing really to break. doesn't even pull the whole stack out. Weird. Okay, the bot puts in the six match. Fuck, I don't have a card. I don't have a match on four either. Would like to wrap this up sooner rather than later. sir. Then beat me.
I'm also fine if the bot wins, right? The um, the bot started the game as a bot, so whoever wins in the one v one, for me and Black gets all the rank points. But it's pretty hard for me to come back at this point. Yeah, and I get the six match. Yeah, I'm toast. Too bad. Black wins. No, Mosmus just punches me as he should. And I die. And that's the game. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I know it's a big ask. Um, but I couldn't just sit and watch. The colors are one thing, you know? Who cares? It's colors. I'm an adult. I have a favorite color. So now I can't play with it anymore. I got to play with it for a little bit. But the ability to go as fast as I know I can, it's very important to my enjoyment, very central <laughs> to my enjoyment of this game. The last thing I just would leave on is thank you for playing with me. Thank you for watching. If you like the work I'm doing on YouTube, please subscribe. Check me out on Twitch. Thank you for making the game so great that I love so much. Thank you for all of you on the path to world domination. Good games and good luck.